On May 22, 2013, Pope Francis gave a homily that created quite a stir in the Catholic world. In that homily, the Pope was talking about Christ's redemptive work, and he stated that Christ's redemptive work was for all people, not just for Catholics. In other words, Christ didn't come just for an elite group of people, but for all people. To add emphasis to the point, the Pope said this means that Christ's redemptive work was for atheists as well. Now, this created a big stir. Many Catholics were upset that the Pope said that atheists can go to heaven. Now, first of all, I think it's important for us to understand what the Pope did and did not say. He did not guarantee anybody was going to heaven. But also, he didn't say that atheists are definitively going to hell. Rather, what he stated was a teaching that can be found in the Catholic Church going back centuries, going back to the apostles. And it's articulated best, I think, in the 605th paragraph of the Catechism of the Catholic Church. So I'd like to read that paragraph to you. It says, The Church, following the apostles, teaches that Christ died for all men without exception. There is not, never has been, and never will be a single human being for whom Christ did not suffer. Now this paragraph makes it clear that Christ's suffering is for all people. So if anybody is going to be redeemed, they're going to be redeemed through Christ. So what the Pope wasn't saying was that atheism is a valid way to salvation or anything like that. Rather, the Pope was saying that Christ's suffering his redemptive work extends to all people. It's universal. The Catholic Church, the word Catholic means universal. It is the universal means of salvation because it has the fullness of truth in it. Now, when it comes to understanding this, I think it's important for us to understand a concept of grace. So God has bestowed grace upon us, but he hasn't bestowed grace equally amongst people. Some people have been given more grace than others. We refer to this as the scandal of particularity. In other words, somebody like me might have received a significant amount of grace, let's say. But certainly, no matter how much grace I've received, I'm never going to claim that I've received as much grace as the Blessed Virgin Mary, for example. She's full of grace, and I'm certainly not. But beyond that, there's the question of, how am I cooperating with the grace that has been bestowed upon me? You see, an atheist still has been given grace, and we teach that an atheist has been given enough grace for him to achieve his own salvation. But it's important for him to cooperate with that grace, just as it's important for me to cooperate with the grace that's been given to me. Now, I've been given enough grace to understand the truths of the Catholic faith and that the fullness of truth subsides in the Catholic Church, and therefore it's incumbent upon me to follow the teachings of the Catholic Church. An atheist, obviously, has not received that grace, but let's assume there's an atheist who has received grace and is trying to do good. They understand the natural law and are sincerely trying to live out a good life. Well, we say that person, if they're cooperating with the grace that's been given to them to the fullest extent, would certainly have the possibility of salvation. The church, for this reason, doesn't teach that we know definitively anybody to be in hell other than Satan. The reason for this is because we don't know how much grace anybody has been given. Somebody even as bad as Adolf Hitler, for example, might have been using the what little amount of grace he'd been given to the fullest ability. Also, he might have been given a lot of grace and might have been refusing it. So we just don't know, and so we don't definitively say, well, Hitler is definitely in hell or something like that. Our response would be, we don't know. Hell could, in fact, be empty, but it could, in fact, be very full as well. The important thing for us to remember is that we have all been given grace by Christ, and Christ has given us the opportunity for salvation. Whether or not you're a Christian, that opportunity for salvation comes from Christ and Christ alone. And in having that opportunity, it's important for us to cooperate with grace. Now, for some people, we have to cooperate more strictly with grace because we've been given grace to understand more and more things, and so different things become incumbent upon us. By analogy, we can think of just our own maturity as human beings. Certainly, we expect different type of behavior from a 20-year-old than we do of a 3-year-old. You know, a 20-year-old should know better than to hit his younger brother and sister, for example. A 3-year-old may or may not know that yet. And so it's incumbent upon the 20-year-old to act like a 20-year-old. A 3-year-old is going to have to cooperate with as much grace as he's been given in order to understand how to relate to his brothers and sisters, for example. By analogy, we can say that the same thing when it comes to grace, that for salvation, it's incumbent upon us who have been given great faith to live by that faith and to live it out fully. For people who have been given less faith, we can't fault them for having received less faith. You see, one of the things we like to do as Christians is to take credit for our faith. We often forget that our faith is itself a gift. You know, so often we talk about, you know, we've come to know Christ. See, nothing could be further from the truth. 
Christ revealed himself to us. We didn't come to know Christ. Think about scripture when Jesus asked the apostles, who do you say that I am? Well, Peter says, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus doesn't say, thankfully, you figured this out, Peter, congratulations. No, he says, blessed are you, because flesh and bone hasn't revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven has. See, for us as Christians, the fact that we're Christians is a blessing. It's something that we receive from God. It's a grace. We didn't figure it out on our own, but rather God has chosen to reveal it to us. For somebody who is an atheist, for whatever reason, they may not have had that revelation given to them. Now, I'm not precluding the fact that there could be some atheists who just simply are adamantly refusing to cooperate with grace. That certainly is a possibility, and they would be held accountable for that. But certainly our church teaches that if somebody is cooperating with grace, the path to salvation is there for them. That's what Pope Francis was trying to say, is that it's Christ who has laid that path of foundation, or that path to salvation. And it's open to all people because he has given everybody the grace necessary for salvation. And in doing so, it's possible for anybody who cooperates with the grace given to them by Jesus Christ, even if they don't recognize who it, from whom that grace came, to achieve salvation. And so if we want to achieve salvation, it becomes necessary for us to cooperate with the grace that's been given to us, to follow the faith that we have, and to follow it to the best of our ability. Not to compare ourselves to other people, because we don't know if they've been given the same amount of grace, but to say, how much grace have I been given, and am I using that grace to the fullest of my ability? And if I do that, then the path to salvation is open to me.